Hello everyone, my name is Stacy Rockwell and I am the Field Services Program Manager with the Oregon Office of Rural Health. I'd like to welcome you to the 37th Annual Oregon Rural Health Conference. I will be the moderator for this session. First, I'd like to take a moment to thank our great sponsors. Uh, because of their support in these challenging times, they've made it possible for us to offer this conference to you at no cost, and we're very grateful to them. Please join me in thanking our gold members, the Oregon Rural Health Association, All Care Health, our silver sponsors, Eastern Oregon Coordinated Care Organization, the Oregon Association of Hospitals and Health Systems, and the River House on the Deschutes. Our bronze sponsor is RQI Partners, and our copper sponsors are Westcom, the American College of Education, and Inquisique. You should have received an email with a link to our conference app. If you can use the app to visit our partner's virtual booth and enter to win prizes, network with others, and we invite you to share photos of your hometown. Next slide. Don't forget to complete your evaluation survey about this session. This is how you'll get continuing edu education credit. Even if you're not seeking continuing education credit, complete the survey and it gives you a chance to win a $100 gift card. We do read all of the evaluations and value your input. Next slide. This session, Make Google and Rate Indeed Your Ally and Friend, will be presented by our friends at Survey Solutions by ICANN and ADCO. Jake Hansen, Director of Technology at Survey Solutions by ICANN, Julie Russell, President of ADCO at Agency, and Craig Stewart, Director of Business Development of Survey Solutions and ICANN. Without further ado, I'd like to welcome Jake, Julie, and Craig. Thanks, Stacy. We should have sat that way. Yeah, we should have sat that way. So it's Craig and Jake and Julie. <laughs> Thank you so much, Stacey. Uh, my name is Craig Stewart. I'm the Director of Business Development for Survey Solutions by ICANN. And on behalf of Julie Russell, the President of ADCO Agency, and Jake Hansen, the Director of Technology for Survey Solutions by ICANN, we are super excited to be at the 37th Annual uh, Oregon Rural Health Conference. We wish we could have been there in person. Mm -hmm. but, uh, this is a nice treat that we get to come visit with you in October. And before we get started, I just wanted to tell a little bit about our company. Survey Solutions by ICANN is one of the premier providers of survey solutions to the rural healthcare markets. And it is in conjunction with Julie Russell, the owner and founder of Adco Agency. How long have you owned the agency, Julie? Almost 24 years. 24 years. So. We also do a lot of other services like web development, marketing, branding, and we'll get in a little bit um, to some of those other things we do as, as the presentation unfolds. But a little bit of housekeeping. At the end of our presentation today, we are going to be giving away a free marketing kit. So we will do a drawing. One kit, two kits, two kits. So we're going to end up giving away two kits at the end of the presentation day for anyone that attended this session. Patient experience. <laughs> There's no doubt that everyone, especially in the state of Oregon, wants to give world-class care, um, have happy patients. Um, I know, especially working in like the rural healthcare markets, that we know that everyone in your organization is wearing multiple hats. The marketing director is the human resource person. The CEO is on his, his or her hands and knees crawling through the emergency room when the power goes out. And so we know that everyone's working extremely hard to make sure that your patients have a great experience when you come to your organization. But unfortunately, sometimes that doesn't always play out in your surveys, um, and in your online reputation as well. And so as you start to think about those things, when you gather that feedback, you're really focused on trying to understand the VOC, or voice of your customer, or, or in the healthcare market, the VOP, the voice of the patient. And so when things don't quite go well, you get in huddles, and you have department meetings, and you think about 
things that you can do that, like, how can we increase scores? How can we get better reviews? And so you start talking about, we need to be more kind to patients. Everyone start being more kind, okay? <laughs> Lots of more kindness. That will increase the scores. We need to treat patients with more respect. You know, what, what are things that we can do to make sure that they're, they're, we're respectful during their visit? And this is a big topic. We say we need to have a relationship with our patients. We need to call them. We need to schedule. We need to make sure that um, we're constantly engaging with them and having a relationship. So what do all of these patient interactions have in common? They happen when the patient is physically present. And so today, during our presentation, we'd like to talk about some of those times when the patient isn't physically present, um, when they're not in your facility, when they're going online and they're writing a review, when they're taking a survey and you're not there to physically um, make sure they're having a great experience and um, being able um, to be with them, answer their questions, and make sure that they're having a great experience in your facility and hospital and organization. So today, Jake is going to start us off by talking about the importance of an online reputation, um, what type of platforms should you be monitoring, um, go into some good online practices to build a five-star rating. I'm going to go back into some complementary, I would say, non-traditional engagement techniques and Julie's going to finish up with some tips to respond to online activity and how you can get started. Mr. Hansen? Thanks, Craig. Hi, everyone. Thanks for having us. Um, so online reputation, why is that important? Well, I'm sure by now everyone knows that one good post can either make or break you, right? If you have a great post, it can go viral and you could be on Good Morning America the next day. So if it, but if it goes the wrong way viral, you could be in some hot water. So we want to talk about why that reputation is so important. So one, the internet is so far reaching. It's everywhere. Every, almost everyone is on it. Okay? You can't go anywhere now without seeing somebody buried in their phone looking at something. The internet directly influences opinions. So if I'm looking for a new doctor or I want to have an, elect, uh, an elected procedure done, um, I'm going to look online. I'm going to start reading reviews, start looking into these doctors and these hospitals, and that's going to influence my opinion, the reviews that I see online. The Internet is the largest source of consumer reviews and information. So the more good stuff we can have out there, the more Nice, nice reviews people have, the more articles posted, the more doctor bios out there, the better. We want to have a large swath of information out there for anybody to find and use. We want to be intentional with our marketing. Okay? So if we're going to be online, we can't just post, hey, it's National Dog Day, here's a picture of my dog. Well, that's great, you have a cute dog, but what does that tell me about your services? We also have to be intentional about our market. Who are we trying to reach? So with that, you have specific channels. What channels on social media and the Internet should I monitor? Well, you have healthcare-specific channels. You also have general public, at excuse me, general public at large channels, your Google, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Glassdoor, all of those. You have to know your audience. Set your goal. What are you trying to do? Are you trying to reach the younger crowd? Well, if you're trying to reach a younger crowd, we probably want to hang out in the Instagram, Twitter world. If we're trying to reach, maybe and do some recruiting for nurses, maybe we're on Health Grades or Glassdoor. We're monitoring those, those reviews on Glassdoor. You know, LinkedIn's also a great spot. You have to really get down what your goal, what your goal is and then start to look at where do those people live on social media? Where's the best place to find them? Then you get into your reviews like Google and Glassdoor. You want to monitor those as well. Now, you can't monitor everything at once, but Julie's going to talk about a tool that will greatly help you. While that's the case, you still have to get in there and look occasionally and make sure that there's nothing bad out there. Understand, understanding which social media channels your target audience uses is going to be key to getting your message out. 
So your messaging, you have to be frequent with it. You can't just post once a month and think that that's going to start building you a following. So what we recommend usually is setting a schedule for a month, right? And so Julie's going to talk about a tool here at the end on something you can use to schedule these, but you want to have an idea of what you're going to do every month and create your posts and get on a schedule. The types of posts. Now, this is my favorite thing to talk about. So a post is not a post is not a post. They're not all the same. You have to think about what you want. And think about it for yourself when you're scrolling social media. If it's just text, like, do you read it that much? If there's a picture, do you stop and look? If it's a video, what do you watch? What engages you? So if it's text only, you're going to have about 10% of the people that see it actually stop and read it. So not a whole lot. Add a picture with that text, and it goes to 65%, which is great. That's pretty good. You do a video, you get 92% people will view it and share it. That's how you really get your message out. When we talk to clients, I typically only recommend that they do image and text posts or video posts, usually a combination of the two. I really like it when they do two videos to every one text and image post. But again, that's up to you. Start to play with it, see, what's, see what works best for your audience. What to post. You have to build value with your audience. As I just said, stop and think, is this something I would read or I would look at or I would view? Put yourself in your audience's shoes and think about that. Okay? The little bit of time it takes to come up with some great content is going to greatly increase how many people look at your page and view your posts. Topics to cover. Well, the big one that's on here, that's not on here right now, would be COVID-19. How are we opening back up? How are we keeping everyone safe? I think a real easy video would be some, one, of, one of your administrators hopping on, talking about the, the procedures you're going through and the things you're doing to keep your patients safe and keep your hospital clean. That'd be really, really easy, and you can get it out there pretty quick. Other things to cover, different big healthcare news, anything big going on. Clinic and hospital updates. So if, you got, if you're adding a new wing onto the hospital or updating uh, your clinic and putting in new, you know, some new service, shoot a video about it. Let's talk to the people involved in that. Staff news, um, success stories. Do you have someone that's been there for a long time and has continued to climb the ladder and do great? Do you have um, someone that came in at physical therapy um, with a really bad problem and now they're working through it and they're getting better and better, talk to them. Let's see if we can do a little story about that. Uh, physician profiles, community projects, both of those are great things to have in there. Get the new doctor to sit down for two minutes and answer some questions in front of the camera and get it out there. Okay? The more you can personalize with them, the more the community is going to come to see them. And last but not least, to boost or not to boost, or promote or sponsor, you'll see all of these as you get out here on your journey on social media. You can boost, you can sponsor, and you can promote, but be careful. You don't have to promote everything. Wait until you have something that's really important. Let's say you're having a blood drive and you need people to show up. That's a great time to boost something. You don't have to boost the new, commu you know, the new doctor's um, profile or bio, but if you've got a story that you really want to get out there and you really want to tell and you need some interaction, don't be afraid to boost it for a little bit or sponsor or uh, promote depending on your platform. So with that, I'm going to pass it back over to Craig. I've talked to you about online marketing and managing of your reviews. Now I'm going to let Craig talk about some complimentary engagement inside your hospital. We're taking a little bit of a different direction talking about complimentary engagement, and we'll make a point. We'll explain it here in just a second. But one of the things that we hear the most when we talk to um, providers, CEOs, directors of nursing is whenever there's a problem in their facility, um, they wish they knew right then and there. And they wish that they were dealing with it at the facility um, inside the building, in the parking lot, wherever that might be, they want to make sure that they can close the loop on some of that feedback. And so as we think about this, 
I wanted to pose a question to everybody. Um, what do all hospitals have in common? I know you're all shouting at your computer screens right now, <laughs> yelling out the wrong answer. Um, but one of the things, I've been working in healthcare for about 12 years now, and one of the things that I've realized more than anything is that you have nothing in common. Now, before you throw something at me, um, my point would be is every, every building's different. Um, there's different customs in different areas, different languages. There's so many different things that are different. Um, we get the privilege to travel around a lot of different hospitals, and so I get to see some of the unique fundraisers that you guys do um, around the United States. And uh, for example, this is a nice uh, Fourth of July cakewalk um, that we saw in one of our, our, our hospitals. And um, very acceptable, that's what they're doing for their fundraiser. I uh, went to another hospital, which I will not name, and <laughs> this was the fundraiser they were doing. Um, Jake really tended to like this fundraiser a lot better. <laughs> they tend to travel together a lot. Um, but my point I'm trying to make is, you know, what hospitals have in common sometimes is they have nothing in common. And where some of the things where we see some of the biggest differences would be in the infrastructure and layout. So everyone's got a different discharge area. Everyone's got an addition, uh, a different type of admission process. It's not that. Um, the community, especially right now during COVID times where everyone's coming together and we're so appreciative. The, we, we do share a lot of the similarities right now in the healthcare space. But one of the things that we notice is you guys have sprawling buildings. Sometimes they're not, um, especially in, in the rural markets, budgets can be a little bit tighter. And so you're waiting on some of that development and uh, new construction to happen. And so what does this have to do with your online reputation and online management. Well, there's a couple types of ways that we can deal um, with, message, with messaging and trying to control some of the feedback. Active, what I mentioned at the beginning, you know, being kind um, to patients, treating them with more respect, um, having your meetings, making sure that that pothole is filled up in the parking lot to make sure that everyone's safe in the environment. Everything that you're doing on a daily basis to make sure that um, your teams are communicating and that the patient is getting that world-class care. But there's a lot of things that you can do in your environment that are passive that can, that can either help promote a great review or maybe it can help, you know, make sure a negative review doesn't happen. So what are some different ways you can do this? Um, postcards. Um, postcards to patients, letting you know them care. Um, one of the things that we consult some of our clients on are posters, making sure that your branding and your messaging is consistent. Tabletops. You know, we will flood a cafeteria with tabletops. Ta tabletops. Tabletops. <laughs> do not cut that out of the presentation. We're keeping that one in. Tabletops. Tabletop. PM. Yeah. <laughs> That's the worst thing that happens. That's okay. okay. Um, but you know, letting letting the, the the family members that are in the cafeteria letting letting them know that you care. Um, we call these bolos things that you can put snaps on lanyards that when um, a nurse or provider um, physician is engaging a patient in close practice, you're letting them know. So again, we're not trying to do any um, tactics or subliminal messaging necessarily, but we're trying to let people know that you that you care um, in a in a very passive way when you can't always be next to them. You can't be everywhere in the building all at one time. So we try to help clients create some of these. And one of the resources that we use to do this is called the Art Department dot online. This is a resource that has and it's it's getting bigger and better every week, every day, every month, where we're constantly adding new campaigns to this. So again, getting back to the smaller budgets, sometimes you don't have thousands of thousands of dollars to develop a custom campaign on your own. Um, sometimes you need some help, and so we understand that in the rural markets, and so we've created this resource where we are doing the work. We are making the campaigns. 
we are coming up with ideas, especially um, during some of the COVID times right now, um, where we're giving you resources that you can use, you can deploy throughout your facility to help make sure your messaging and branding and letting the patients know you care. And so very, very quickly, some things we've put out here, um, you know, uh, appointment cards, postcards, um, posters, all of the stuff that I showed you in the previous slide. The cool thing about this is you can upload your logo to them. Um, you can make them their own. If there's something not on here that you don't see, any one of us, and Julia mentioned this at the end, we're, we're very available to help you with these, with uh, create some of these tools if there's something that you need that you don't see. Um, the really cool thing, this is just kind of getting into um, the actual logistics of it. Um, you can see in the corner there, our screen might be covering it up, but how we've uploaded a logo there. You can point and click, go in, upload your logo, and then at that point in time, you have the choice to either just print it on your own, or if you want to use our output, we can certainly handle that for you and get something out there to you in 48 to 72 hours. And so <clears throat> let's say that um, you've done everything right. Um, you've made all these posters. You've, you've got tabletops, um, tabletops actually, tabletops, <laughs> tabletops <laughs> covering all of your cafeteria. And, uh, you know, you've had your, your huddles, you're being kind to patients, and then this happens. You get the bad review. So, and that's how you feel in that moment. So now Julie is going to go through and talk about some tips on how to respond to online negativity. Haven't we all been there? Just let that sink in. When I find you, I will ask you to take down your bad review. Um, you know, it's easy when everything is going well and moving along and you're doing all the great posts that Jake and Craig, you know, taking all of these different things, you're putting them in, you have your calendar and it's all going great and then all of a sudden it kind of hits you with um, something kind of negative shows up or, you know, and what happens? Here's my best advice is be a bee. I love bees. I, everything about them, they always have a choice of if they're going to sting you or not. So when you're being a bee, I know you are really going to want to sting someone or them, and you don't know who they are, um, but you can't because you won't, you won't ever win. That's the tough part about responding online. Um, here are, here's how you need to respond um, in the very, you know, your phone's going to be going and you're going to be like, <gasps> and you might be getting pressure from your manager or from the community, you know, to they may be getting calls, you know, to all of that. And it's, or it could just be some kind of not so nice comment and you're like, oh, but here's what, these are my always list of what you need to do. You always have to be positive and friendly. Um, and, and you don't get a choice around that. Um, even though you're going to want to sting um, and take that little kind of cheap shot or because you know you're right, but it, it doesn't matter online. You know, you can be 100% right and 100% wrong all at the same time. So always be positive and friendly. When you're crafting your response back, you know, and they come in different, there's going to be a handout we're going to do next. So if you want to make sure that's up there so everybody can get downloading that while we're kind of doing this part, then we'll be ready to go. I have like a little cheat sheet of if-thens that we'll go over together. Um, when you're putting your response back together, you know, be helpful and honest. And again, you know, you're, you have a brand, you have a corporate brand, you have to um, make sure that you are, are keeping true to, but at the same time, it's social. So, you know, when we're going to be talking about this, you know, what I don't want to see um, is I want it to be conversational. And we'll delve a little bit further about what conversational means. But when you're thinking and how you're going to craft your message back to, you know, when you're going to reply, you know, it, again, be positive, friendly, helpful, and honest, but also be understanding and use examples, office sources. You know, you have a whole resource of experts 
of this team that is with you. Start using them. So if you have, you know, a chief of staff, a nurse, a doctor, now I totally get that we don't, you know, practice medicine socially and we can't give, you know, that kind of advice, but all of these professionals will have what I'm going to call helpful hints or tips or tricks that you can go ahead and grab some of their, sometimes in order to answer a negative comment, you know, you just, you flood it with positivity. So go out and use, when it's not just your words that can do it, use some different examples. Go, you know, grab a video and ask, you know, the tech who's doing something really interesting. And maybe it's a little off topic, but it's kind of interesting where you can spin it in a direction that makes it positive. You know, just always be understanding and use those different examples. And in your voice that you find, you need to be neutral. So, you know, again, it goes back to our kind, you know, and respectful answers and how we treat patients. We have to use those same tools in how we, you know, respond and react back to some negative comments or positive comments. So you can use, you know, all of these as validation on, you know, positive comments too. But that being neutral and consistent um, is kind of that glue that's going to pull everything together so you have you know, some good consistency and you can also start kind of relating back to some different posts that you have up there too. And um, be kind to trolls. And if you don't know what a troll is, um, it is such a good word to describe them. They are the angry internet user that they're, you know, they have just such a poor sense of self to that. They like find joy in going out and attacking um, either people or companies, hospitals, clinics, and they're just trolls. They may not even be in your same state and because everybody can post on Facebook from wherever they are. Um, but they were trolls that Billy Goat Gruff, and they are just, nothing is going to make them happy. Nothing is going to be a solution. So here's the thing. You, a troll wants to engage you, and they just want to tell everybody else how right and smart they are, how wrong you are, and how terrible you are. So if you're kind to them, really the way you win to a troll is being, is being nice and not letting them get to you because what's going to happen, and this, sounds, this is like, I hate to say this, you really just want them to move along and unfortunately they're going to go somewhere else but, and be a troll to somebody else but that becomes their problem, you, you really just want them to go away. And so if they know they're not going to, they'll get bored with you and they'll, they'll be on um, to their next trolling experience. But, okay, here is our worksheet. Let's go through this, and I set up so you can um, print it off, you know, share and copy it however you want to. Um, but let's look through, I put this together just as like, again, the tips and tricks. And I think that very top, how I titled it is what's most important. Is, you know, how to review a post or a comment. Do I need to engage, or is it just chatter? So, what you don't want to be is a busybody online with all of your responses to that. So just because somebody says something doesn't mean you have to hit the like button or comment or do all that. You know, let it sit. Choose wisely. Um, you don't have to be, yes, there is some common courtesy or internet courtesies to that, but that doesn't mean you have to acknowledge every single post or comment because in a way that's kind of annoying because as a person, you wouldn't do that, and that's where we have to take our corporate persona and move this into, um, it's a person, you know, who's responding to this because it's, it's, it's social media and that means it's person to person. So you have to take that corporate brand and still be respectful of that and you're going to have some rules you have to follow to that, and that's good. You want to be consistent to that, but then you're going to have to find your voice that's going to become your brand, your online brand um, conversation. And one of the big things is don't, when you're going to respond or write back, you know, even when you're crafting your, you know, 
your regular good ones and all that, even though, and also when you're replying back to good or, or negative um, posts, the way I want you to craft your message is how you speak. Um, I see a lot of posts where they're very, um, they're written like a white paper or they're written how we would answer essay questions. And that's not the right approach because you're going to come across very cold. And what we want to be is conversational. So the words that you use, you can use contractions in social. Um, use it as, it, it's exactly how you would speak. So when you're, and if you want to um, practice this, listen to like um, the local like evening news or the morning news. And when those anchors are talking to you, that's the conversational tone that I want you to, to use. I don't want it to be as if it's um, written by an attorney and it's a white paper or it's very rules and regulated. Um, we just want it to be ready to go with that. Uh, so let's say you get a review and it's positive. So we're going to be on this, this top corner, and the first question that I want you to ask yourself is, is it true and relevant? You know, if it's true, or it, let's say it's not true, or let's say it's not very relevant, then you're going to pop over to the no part and say, you know, when you're going to reply to that, try to respond kindly with correct info through engagement and trust. It's not, you dummy head, you got it wrong. It's, hey, you know, we are going to have that health fair, but it's actually Friday, October, something, something, and, you know, and you don't have to say instead of. It's just, just correct them. Don't point out that they're wrong. Just get that correct and factual information out, you know, kindly, succinctly, and, you know, less words or more when you're replying on social. Um, and then so it gets back into that yes column. So let's say, is it true, is it relevant? Yes. And this is when it goes into that whether or not we're going to engage, um, or if it's just chatter. If it's just chatter and it's true, just let it slide through. Let the rest, let your audience, let your, you know, I call the people who really support and love, you know, the hospital, your, your online heroes, go ahead and let them just love it. And, you know, oh, we love Dr. Smith, he is so awesome. Oh my gosh, he helped, you know, he delivered my daughter, Emily. I don't, all of these different parts. Just let it go. You don't have to be a part of it. Just be like, oh, look, they love us. Um, but here's some other pieces. If you do decide to, you know, positively say, you know, thank you, thank you is always a good word. Um, always be positive and friendly and craft your reply. Don't react. So if it's Saturday and you've had a long day at the soccer field and somebody puts a, and you're just like, oh, I'm tired, I'm hot, <sighs> I just want to go home, that's probably not the right time to um, just whip out your phone and do that reply real quick. Make sure you always craft your reply wisely. And when you have a good sense of mental state to it, be helpful and honest. You know, get an answer for them. Engage an in-house expert. You know, that's always a great way, you know, even to, you know, for validation pieces that, you know, go out and grab one of the nurses. You know, and that's where it goes into that video content or photos mm -hmm. or different things. You can always add all that stuff in there. You know, it just shows like, hey, they're paying attention to this. Hey, they're awesome. Hey, they're real. I like this hospital. I want to mm -hmm. go there. Um, I don't want to leave town. I want to be, you know, where my local experts are. Um, be understanding, use examples, office sources, you know, take your time, write well, please proofread. Um, at the agency, I have um, a, a really big rule. Um, a typo to me just says you're lazy, um, and there really isn't any other um, response to that. So just make sure you don't have a typo. If you see a typo, man, jump in there, edit it, and get that typo fixed. Um, be neutral and consistent. Your attitude and tone reflects the whole company or organization, and that's kind of getting into that voice of, um, of your brand or of the, of the hospital. And then be kind to trolls um, by not engaging. Just let them go. So let's go over to these negative ones, then we'll get a little bit more into the troll stuff too. Here's the first one. Does the comment contain abusive language, threats, or foul words? If it does, here it is. This is easy. Delete it. And that's about the only time I ever will say, yep, you got to, it's time to delete that. There's a lot of times you're going to want to delete posts just because they're unkind or unfriendly. Um, 
the other time would be if somebody's making a comment about a doctor, like here where we are, we have um, two different hospitals. So if somebody mixes up a doctor that really isn't at your hospital than at the other one, you could do two things. You could either, you know, correct the information and leave it there, or, you know, because if he is, you know, if there is some issues to that, maybe you do want people to know that he's, you know, not with your organization. Or at that point, um, I kind of have to look at that each time. But that would be one I would be okay with deleting as well because it's, it's, it's irrelevant and it's not, it, it doesn't apply to you, it's incorrect. So um, if it is, you know, ignore, block, delete, the post to comment, all of these different channels are gonna have different ways to do that. Sometimes, you know, somebody who writes something negative, you can just hide them so they don't know that they're hidden or blocked, but all of the rest of the people on your page um, won't see those comments or those posts. It's kind of a nice feature. Um, but let's say it doesn't have any, you know, foul language um, to that. Is this person being a troll? Just bashing the industry or the company, you know, uh, if that's it, then you need to go over here. You know, sometimes I would say just ignore the post or the comment. Because remember, a troll is trying to engage you and get a reaction from you. And as soon as they get that, man, they're going to like take that little open door and, you know, push it wide open. Um, really try not to engage. Um, if, you know, if they keep doing it, doing it, doing it, then just start deleting them or blocking them, you know, from, from being a part of that. But this is when you have to remember you have your online heroes and you naturally have them and you build them from in that positive category when they're posting those different things, you'll build them. And you will be surprised at how they will come to your rescue. And you just, you know, it's just the white horse, they come in and you're like, oh, yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. And sometimes if you just let some time pass, the heroes, your online community are going to fix your problem for you and you don't have to, especially with trolls. Those are the ones that um, you really just, you know, again, you just want to push them along so they get to their next victim, unfortunately. Um, does the post have incorrect information um, or errors? Use the judgment, find the correct info, word your response kindly. You may agree or disagree with the post as long as you come across helpful, not a know-it-all. Um, engage with soft words that are inclusive. Um, it was kind of my you know, example of, yes, we're having the health fair, but it's on Saturday, not Sunday, or, um, it could be, I had, I waited three hours to see Dr. Smith and, you know, I am never going to wait that long. He is not running his office very well. You know, he was so behind, blah, 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 blah. You know, there's nothing wrong when somebody has a really bad um, experience. It's okay to, to validate that to them. That's not, you know, they're not going to know that Dr. Smith had an emergency that someone was having some real difficulty and needed to take some extra time or leap into something else. You know, and it, it is what it is at that point, but you can smooth that over because so many times somebody just wants to hear back from you that you care, that they were heard. Um, and, and so, you know, you'll kind of have to find, um, Find your way with that, but again, you know, soft words, I can't emphasize that enough. Um, and it's okay to, to validate their, their concern to that. Um, that. You know, we also live in some hippo world rules to it, so there's only so far <laughs> that, that you can get that it's kind of hard to even validate that this person was there. So, you know, when you would say something like, oh, wow, you know, we don't ever want a patient to, you know, have a long, you know, when they have an appointment, they have to wait three hours. You know, it's a true statement, and I don't know that that is necessarily, you know, you just be really careful with your HIPAA words to so that you're not identifying somebody or, a, you know, in social, because their, you know, their name will normally be there or, you know, their identifying, you know, persona will be there. So you got to have to be a little careful with that. Um, but let's say, this, is this comment a result of a bad experience? Um, and this goes back to the picture um, between Craig and I. Um, 
privately message them or reach out directly because, you know, when you know the person, you probably figure it out. This is when you take that social comment. If they are that angry or that upset or that hurt or that something, this is when you don't even, you don't even keep it online. You take it offline and you reach out to that person and if it's, you know, you call them, reach out, you know, you're going to have their, maybe their email or their telephone. You pick up the phone, you talk to that person and say, hey, I saw your post and I just want to make sure, you know, do you need to, you know, say who you are. Do I need, you know, would you like to have a nurse call you? Would you like to, you know, offer the regular things that you're going to have available to offer to them and say, you know, and talk them through this and say, you sounded really angry and I just want to talk to you, you know, we sure didn't want you to have this kind of experience at all at the hospital. And, you know, goes right back into all of those, while that patient, you know, the respect and the kindness and all of that, you're going to jump right into that mode for them. And then once you find that you have that, you know, kind of that situation a little bit more under control, there's nothing wrong and you find that you've brought that temperature down a lot for them, there's nothing wrong with them saying, you know, and, and it might not be in your first conversation with them, there's nothing wrong with following up or, or saying, okay, you know, your post really caught my attention, but that could really be damaging. And, you know, I'm hoping that I fixed, you know, I, I'm helping, you know, to get you in a better place or, you know, fill in the blanks to it. Um, would you consider, like, adding something to your post or revising your post or, or even taking it down? Um, there's nothing wrong with you calling them out on what they did and asking them to change it. Um, and some of those really damaging ones, those can, you know, it's just like every other customer service issue that you have. A lot of times you can twist it around and make that very negative into um, a much more positive experience. So let's go into, we only have a couple minutes left, so let's jump into how in the world do you get started putting together all of these different campaigns and these, these great positive ones that we want to push out. We have new doctors, we have new everything. We already talked about the negative ones, so now let's like end with all like the good positive stuff <laughs> to it. So the first thing I want you to do is decide, you know what, I want to be intentional. And if you're not intentionally you set this direction and goals for success to where you want to go, you're just never going to get there. And you'll just kind of keep wandering along the social media path and all of that. Set it up. You know, look at it in a month long and say, what are your goals? What are we going to try to accomplish? We have these people new. We want to highlight this department. We want to do this funny thing. This is interesting. We have these different events going on. Put a calendar to it. <laughs> before you put the calendar to it, do a full social media audit. And this goes back to um, when Jake was talking about know your audience and what different channels that they're, you know, participating in. Look at this and say, okay, what's right for us? You know, maybe it is Facebook and Instagram because they connect together and they're really easy to manage. You know, Twitter might be a little too far, Snapchat, you know, all of those things. Kind of Put it all out there, see what your community is doing, and then decide intentionally which is the one that is, is right for you. Start small. Don't have this grandiose plan and think you're going to, like, be rock stars out of the gate. Start small. Get your success stories. Get your voice. You know, get, get everything going. Get some confidence and, you know, kind of find a groove to that. Start small and start, you know, building as you go. This is where I said create that master posting schedule for all these different channels and all the different topics and all of the different content. It's going to be the hardest thing. Content for everybody is always the hardest. All the other stuff is pretty easy about channels and how you do it. Um, it's that good quality content, have it be photo, text, video, interviews, um, testimonials. You have all that great stuff coming up. Um, this is the one that um, we, I recommend a lot to clients to use because it's shareable. Um, I like Hootsuite. It lets you put the different channels in. It is a free one, I think, for like if you have one account, but you can have multiple people have access to it so you kind of see what's going on. But then in the paid-for version, you can do um, kind of a, a listening. So if Jake posts something on Facebook about your hospital, not on your page, but about you, that Hootsuite's going to, you know, those keywords are going to click up and um, you'll be able to see 
some of the other things that people are posting so that you're aware of um, all of that. Um, and that's the monitoring, you know, the, the different comments and things um, in real time. So the other thing when you're creating this content, we use a word called clickbait. And those visual graphics or those photos that you use, you know, just think of when you're scrolling through, you know, Facebook or whatever it is, if those photos, you know, are worth a thousand words. So don't put a thousand words on them. Just let it be that picture, let it be, you know, you just want to capture their attention. And if, you know, what you write at the top of Facebook um, or Instagram, that's where you pull them in. So don't, and one thought per post or one topic or one element, you'll have, you know, if you have a couple, three things you want to get across, then you really need to do three different posts to it. Um, one thought or piece per um, is the max. The other one I wanted to say when, um, when Jake talked about um, it's National Dog Day, and you're right. Who cares it's National Dog Day, except it is kind of fun if you have some planning time and you're being intentional, go ahead and send out that all company um, little note that says, hey, on Saturday at 10 o'clock at the dog park, bring your dog because it's going to be next month is National Dog Day, and I want to post something that just shows all of our pets. So meet me there at 10 o'clock, we're going to take a picture, and thanks so much. So Saturday at 10 o'clock, when you're there and everybody brings their pet, take a picture. So then when you post that content, and it's National Dog Day, and it's your employees with their pets, that's relevant. And then that becomes engaging and fun because people are like, oh, I know her, I know him, oh, that's a cute puppy. Um, it, again, it's, it's social, it's an engagement to it. So Oregon. Thank you for your time today. Um, we're in um, a cute little town called Peoria, and we are right in the middle of Illinois. And yes, the S in Illinois is silent. <laughs> so um, we really have a passion. We can't pronounce tabletops, but, <laughs> but we can say Illinois. <laughs> if you have any questions for us, you know, outside of our Q&A part to all of this, we are always available. We really have a dedication to, you know, we're, we're not in a gigantic, um, town. We're close to Chicago, but in St. Louis, right in the middle. But we really have a passion for small rural critical access um, health care, and you guys don't get all the same extras that other places do that have bigger budgets to that. Visit the art department online, and I'll kind of give you a little taste to that. But get there, we have a couple really cool new things coming out with hospital safe.com. Um, there's a lot of things that we're constantly putting up and doing together that, you know, don't cost um, for you guys. But then also, some things that we do, you're like, oh, wow, this is really great. I want to tap into it. Um, you don't have to fully engage the agency side to it. We just do so much healthcare marketing for, for smaller hospitals. Um, I, I just really recommend following that art department dot online. And then the other way to know what we're doing is, um, go to MySurveySolutions.com, sign up on our website. Um, these guys are on there all the time. And if you want to demo for your, your survey stuff, that would be great. They're hilarious. Um, but we do webinars just about every month, and sometimes it's, it's Jake and Craig. Sometimes we'll do some marketing stuff. But we have all these different friends around the country who love to give great tips and tricks, too. So um, if you sign up for that, you'll get our emails, and you'll know when our different um, crazy webinars are. Of, of different topics or, or info. Um, but that's all that we have. Thanks, I everyone. Think we're going to open it up for questions. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Um, but thank you for your time. Julie, Jake, and Craig, thank you guys both so much. Um, this has been a great presentation with some great resources that I think are going to be very valuable to the folks out here in Oregon. We really appreciate it. So with that, let's go ahead and move forward or into the question and answer session. Hello, everybody. Um, welcome to the live Q&A session. Uh, if you have any questions, please uh, feel free to post those in the Q&A box down in the right-hand corner of your screen. Um, but I do have some questions um, that came through our app um, that I'm going to go ahead and start in with. So I'll let you guys decide who, who's the best person to answer each of these. But the first question 
is how do you manage reviews without responding with more than just a generic contact us type statement? I want to check our, can everybody hear? Can you hear okay? Okay. I think I answered that one on the app and I added the link um, up above in the chat piece too. So, you know, we have these great regulations around us, you know, that we need to kind of live in these HIPAA pieces so you can't necessarily, maybe I'm combining some of these questions, but you can't, you know, necessarily accept or deny that somebody is a patient or not or has visited or has done that. So when you reply, you know, and it's great to do the please contact us or, you know, do a little bit more diligence, you know, and you reach out to them on, you know, on a back channel to that. But there's a couple different ways of speech that you can use that I would say is acceptable. And I did put on here, I looked it up, it's facebook.com slash policies slash ads. And then if you go down to like number 12, it's called personal attributes. And I think they have really good examples of how you can craft your message. Uh, they do have one on just some different uh, examples. For instance, you could, what's okay to say is bulimia counseling available. You could answer that way because it's generic without saying contact us. You could, what you cannot say is do you have diabetes? You can't say something like depression getting you down, get help now, treat your anxiety with these helpful medications. But what you can say is something like depression counseling, new diabetes treatment available. You know, and that's not necessarily the words you're looking for in, in this example, but I'm having you jump over to Facebook because they have so many different kinds of ways to reply to that. It's kind of a good guide to get your mind you have to reset it so it's not about the person. It's, it's still a little generic, but you can speak to it in a different person, like in a tone to that. And it's more informational based versus answering that person about their issue, complaint, compliment, et cetera. Okay, thank you, Julie. Um, and I think this one uh, kind of pertains to more of the Google type reviews. Um, the question is, is there any way to get reviews taken down completely off of the internet if they are completely false or feeding a lot of negativity? There are, and it's, com it's complicated. Um, with Google, there's no way to take a review down um, through the user interface online. The only way to get a review removed would be to contact Google. Um, oftentimes, you may be on hold for like 20 minutes to get to someone, but you can have a case opened up with them. Um, they may have you send some information over to prove something, but a lot of times, um, especially with a hospital or even a clinic, um, if you have, you know, if you call and you can prove you are who, who you are, um, they'll oftentimes be courteous to you and take it down. Um, sometimes it gets trickier with small businesses and depending on the complaint. Um, but my recommendation would be to call Google. You can simply go to Google and search the My Business Help uh, or Google My Business Help, and then you can find the contact information, call them and submit a claim. Um, you can even probably email the claim, but I always find it's easier to get someone on the phone, and then oftentimes they'll remove that for you. They're pretty fast if it's hateful or obvious it's they're talking about something else that isn't relevant, uh, you, that is an easy one to do online. And they're, they're pretty swift about getting rid of those. That's good to know. Um, on the next question, uh, I think you kind of touched a little bit on it when you were talking about trolls, but the question is how do you uh, qualify legitimate comments versus those created by non-patients? I don't know that you get to. Um, you just need to treat everything as, you know, a customer, potential customer, and you still use those same tools and you kind of go through the same process because that you still want them to, you know, possibly become a customer even if they aren't. So you're going to still treat them with respect and, you know, help them get them to the right place or answer them. If it's trolls, it's difficult. But uh, 
I don't know that there is online. I don't think you're going to treat them differently. Okay. Um, and our, our last question is, how do you encourage patients to rate providers fairly and honestly or at all? That's a kind of a ended question, but um, we'll get your responses. I think the, the biggest key to me now, we see it in survey, surveys all the time, um, it's speed. So oftentimes that provider has, you know, no one becomes a doctor or a nurse to want to be rude to people. They become that to help them. So, I mean, a lot of times that, that patient will have that experience with the provider and then they're asked to give a review two weeks later or they're asked to take a survey six weeks later. Well, a lot's happened in that time. They've forgotten some things. Um, sometimes, quite frankly, they've gotten a bill and it skewed their thoughts or maybe their condition isn't fully remedied. Even though that provider is doing everything right and doing what they can for that patient, not everyone is pleased all the time. So we find it in surveys all the time, and just like a Google review, if you're going to send someone a link to give you a review on Google or ask them to do that, you want them to do it as soon as possible. I would recommend, um, if you're looking for Google views, have a tablet in your office. And ask and have it out as people are leaving and ask them if they would leave an, a review. Um, we do the same thing with clinic tablets or ED tablets in survey world where we want that patient to give us feedback before they leave. Um, it's all anonymous. We're, we don't know who that patient is, but we get a lot better idea on, on their experience that way that rather than waiting six weeks for them to get a survey in the mail. So we talked about the tool, you know, the website that we have, the art department got online. Go there. There's a lot of free resources and marketing ideas that we've put there for everybody to just use, take advantage of. There's no, you know, if you want, if you can take the PDF and print it yourself if you need some help with that, that's there. But the other part to that that we have found is, and it's a fine line because you can't cross that line with satisfaction surveys, but you can go ahead and set people up and let them know and remind them you know, to give you a review or if they could talk to you right then so they can fix it, um, we do have some marketing pieces available on, on that website. And, and, and that a positive review matters. You know, sometimes we forget that, you know, um, you, it, just because someone had a good experience, they may not feel compelled to speak up. You, you want to let people know, like, hey, please speak up, that your opinion does matter, especially if it's a good opinion. Mm -hmm. That's a good note to end on. So we are coming to the end of the session. We're, we're running up kind of close to our next session. But I want to thank um, Julie, Jake, and Craig. Thank you guys so much for this presentation. And thanks for everyone who's attended. Um, if we're, Our next session is scheduled to start in just a couple of minutes at 11 o'clock. And I hope you'll join us. It's with Sherry Hutchinson. And she's going to present on the 340B program, How to Make It Work in My Practice. Thanks, and we'll see you soon. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.